Welcome to the June 19th work session of the Board of Education. Uh, I would like to um, uh, make an amend, uh, have someone make an amendment on the agenda before we start. I'd like to uh, make a motion that we delete 3.02, uh, the passing of the Queen Anne's County School Board School Board Handbook. Second, you have second. Second. And we'll explain why. Okay, we have a set motion second. Um, for discussion, um, we I read in the handbook that that has to be approved in an open session. So we'll still talk about it under presentation. Yeah, open I'm, I'm sorry, a business, um, a business meeting. So it has to happen in J July. Oh, any changes we still suggest are still available to go forward with. We're going to talk about that okay. under um, presentations, right? Okay. But we're just not going to do the actual <coughs> action item of approval. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Any other questions on that motion? So all in favor of the amendment? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. So now I need a motion to approve the agenda as amended. So moved. Second. A motion and a second for the agenda as amended. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. It's, uh, agenda is approved. First thing's capital budget. Yes, thank you, Captain Kelly. Uh, before I start, I just would like to acknowledge the fact that all my exec team is not here. Today is the first day of our or it's our leadership institute for June. So all of our exec team members are there, um, or at least Mr. Um, Paluski is there. Mr. Farley is attending to some human resources business right now. But we do have a um, presentation for you on the capital budget. Of course, the commissioners approved the capital budget. We are not at liberty to make adjustments to that. Um, we're here to share with you um, the impact of some of the cuts that were made and our plan for moving forward. Okay. Mr. Fister? So um, before you is the, um, in your board docs, is your CIP uh, capital improvement. And we put some impact of some of the funding reductions below that. Um, but just walking through the, the document, um, the first column is the requested funding between the, with the state and the county. So the state was $673,000 um, requested from the county was $6.9 million. What was finally approved, there was a small adjustment um, to the state funding down to $656,000 um, and the county funding went down uh, down to 4.9. Uh, so it was a reduction of about $2,066,000 uh, uh, from the county. Um, very similar schedule to what's in your, your budget document um, with the major construction, the systemics, the facility assessment related. Uh, we just kind of collapsed that from all of those individual ones into just one comprehensive building assessment um, line, safety and security, vehicle replacement technology, and then some of the miscellaneous. And as you can see, other than textbooks, everything in the miscellaneous um, area was not funded. So. Um, the, Im the impact of the funding reductions, um, I could certainly go through them, but uh, Mr. Pender and Ms. Bowen are here as well. Um, $500,000 reduction in comprehensive building assessment were required delays in many of the routine projects. The $500,000 reduction in miscellaneous will require delays to some very old uh, equipment um, at some of the schools, uh, including PA and intercom systems. The bus replacement, uh, $100,000 we were under the impression that that was going to be corrected, um, but that $100,000 cut remained. Uh, we'll have to do or request some adjustments there because we do have four buses that need to be replaced um, because of the mandated 15 years of service. And what do you then, mean some adjustment? What I'm that, sorry? What does that mean? What is so the adjustment idea? The, the four, if you recall, a couple of years ago, we had uh, seven or eight buses that were going to go out at the same time. Uh, that would meet the 15-year lifespan. So instead of asking the county for, hey, I need eight buses this year, we took four off last year, three or four off last year, and then we were taking four this year to spread it out kind of evenly over the years. Um, and they didn't fund $100,000 for that. But I can take the amount of money for the vehicle replacement, if you saw there for maintenance, and just defer that for another year and use that 115. I, need, I mean, I need a bus. I can't, you know, operate because they're out of commission July 1st. So, you know, we can defer some of the uh, the transportation or not transportation, the uh, the maintenance equipment that's you know from 1994 
in uh, 1990 and for another year or so. The maintenance, what, what, just, what, the, what is the maintenance? Trucks, um, vans, yep, just the stuff that the guys, yep, are traveling in. I mean, we've been, for the past several years, like I've been <coughs> trying to spread it out so that we're not asking for it all at once, just giving them steady, the commissioner's steady numbers as they request it, just like the facility assessment piece that we request at 1.4, so that, <coughs> you know, each year in advance, that's what we're coming for. Um, so there's no surprises for that. So we do like two and five years out, yep. major things coming up so we can... Oh, so we, we did a facility assessment about three years ago that really has given us the information that we need for the next 20 years. Um, and it, is, it spells out everything from you know the interior, the exterior, and with the cost associated with it, it's all on a computer program. We've shared that. We can share it with everybody in here. Um, we shared it with the county commissioners and the county executive, but it really spells out before we didn't have anything. I mean, we're just kind of like, all right, we think this might go down this year. And some things like that still might happen. But the commissioners kept telling us and the county executive, uh, um, Greg Todd, kept saying, hey, we need something that is standard for years. So about 1.4 million will kind of handle those needs every year. Now, don't get confused with when we say capital, you still have the capital part that's approved by the state. All right, and that, that funding. Um, but this part here where you see the facility assessment, those are like, you know, the painting of the buildings. Some of them, like, we're fortunate enough this year to paint Sellersville Elementary and Graysonville Elementary. It's been 21, 22 years since they've been able to be painted. We want to get them back on a cycle of every seven to 10 years. And then you can also take what we fix, it goes back into the database, and then it repopulates and then, you know, hey, we've crossed that off, so we have a track of actually what's occurring and what's going on with that. So these three maintenance vehicles, are these things we've already approved, like the box truck, or are these three the, that we these haven't are, seen yet? Yes, ma'am, there are the three you haven't seen yet, and we won't get to see them this year. Okay. So I see here the $350,000 deduction, the technology plan is now gonna have to come out of the operating budget. Is that what I'm reading this correctly? So yes. How are we going to? And and so that is just a um, something that we would propose that we would have to do because if something went down and it's not in the capital, we have no choice. We have no other source for it. It, yeah. it, it would not affect the the twenty. FY budget, twenty. The twenty budget. What we're saying is because of this reduction, we're going to have to put off the things, and then if we don't, in the future, get one point four million dollars for the five-year technology plan as a minimum, right. then some of those things that are falling off the technology plan will have to come into future operating budget requests. Where would we, where would we be pulling it from then? It, I mean, would, it would go in as a new request. It wouldn't be necessarily pulling it from somewhere. And so, you know, each year we have different requests, so we sure. prioritize. We just have to prioritize what we decided to purchase. Technology is tantamount right now. It is. Well, I was going to say, so all of those technology um, requests we had last meeting, they're covered. Correct. Yes. Under the capital budget. Correct. Okay. So, so when we vote yes to that, mm -hmm. we already had that plan. Right. So recall that we get a, did a presentation for you uh, a couple of months ago about the technology plan. So we right. went six years out yes. and you saw that we had a plan for when we would purchase different yes. devices, when we would improve infrastructure and those kinds of things. So what we'd have to do and remember is not just a one time. So once no. we purchase laptops we spread that payment right. out over several years so we get locked in right. to as we go in the out years we're okay for this year but as we go in the out years we get locked in so some decisions have to, have be, to made be made about the types of okay. devices that we buy so it may be a lesser quality device and we know what happened you know the first time we had all kinds of you know issues with that so we try to steer away from that but if funds are reduced we do have to reconsider some of the programs that we said we were going to offer Remember the quality the, of the devices the first three years of those first ones that we bought there was so many problems yes and and we, we switched to a whole different manufacturer to get away from our one to get away from that yeah and then we added the, the additional assurance for the right. accidental and the vandalism exactly because you know we were for all that first was 2015. Year. Right. <laughs> That yeah. was, yeah. I mean. What's your protective case? You yeah, we added a protective so. cover on them. I mean, <laughs> right. we're still going to get vandalism. That's 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 just going to be part of the deal. That's always going to be part well, of the deal. Well, there's 6,000 students. So. Right, exactly. Right. Um, Using them. <laughs> yeah. Um, going back and forth from home. So we try to add an extra protection this year and add the insurance for the fifth or eighth. Okay. You guys and we're paying for the insurance even for those families that cannot. Correct. Okay. 
Correct. And just as important, all those upgrades that Mr. Fister felt that we needed for our internal system, like they're covered because they were in our plan. If it was in the plan mm -hmm. for FY20, mm -hmm. it is covered. Okay. And hopefully we don't need an upgrade like that again for a couple of years. So down the road, that may have to be built in again. Well, we do have different parts of it spread to, out. To still over, do. Yeah, we I do. I get that. Mm -hmm. But this was to just barely catch us up yeah. to where our system so needed do, do to be. Do you want to speak to what some of the most um, impactful parts are? Right. Right. This year, uh, I one question. Did we explain to the commissioners the longevity or life expectancy of what things are so when we do something, they understand it, yes. the ones that need to understand it? Yes, sir. We, we even meet with um, uh, the county executive, Jonathan Siemens, um, prior and go, hey, this is what we are going to be coming to ask you for this. So that, yes. And then we've also shared it with the county commissioners of the facility. Yeah. We take a number and we spread it out over like, <coughs> three or four years. They understand, you know, it's a million dollar cost this year. We might be able to do it for 333,000, but it's a three year commitment. And they understand that because, you know, we knock that off and they don't have the cost this year, but it's a reoccurring cost for at least three year commitment. We, we do explain that to them. Whether in, it, I, but in, in documentation enough where in three years, somebody doesn't forget. Yes, I, and when we, as far as like the facility parts and all that, mm -hmm. the technology is a little bit different in my area, but the mm -hmm. facilities, yes. And yeah, they mean, should know that because they have the same issues probably. Yes. Yeah. Smaller scale. Yeah. Right. Matter of fact, they were looking at doing the facility assessment like we did just for theirs. I mean, it's the state, the state's uh, school construction program is, is going to mandate every school system have that done. So we're already kind of ahead of the ball game and it's one of the best things we've ever done. Um, because before we were just kind of grabbing, mm -hmm. so. The, the, the multi-year um, technology plan was their recommendation years back. Mm -hmm. They wanted a multi-year plan. Yeah, well, and we felt like that was going to be an opportunity that could be mm -hmm. funded correctly every year. Right, well, that's so, great if, if they remember. But I was not surprised, that, you know, but, yeah. You know, you get different right. administrations no, and different totally people great. and different, it's political, and then all of a sudden somebody says well, why are you doing this well you know we committed to this two years ago Correct. this is a commitment we have and the decision we made right or wrong we're gonna have to live by it until we do something else well yeah. in 2015 two or three of the county commissioners that are sitting now were there at that meeting yeah. in this room so okay. they all president were yeah they were all it's part and parcel okay. to it what I would like to know is this uh, million eighty one and where do we have fund balance enough to be able to cover that not even or can we at least get those two refrigerated walk-ins taken care of? Do we have that in the fund balance? I'd the 1966. 1966. I mean, my God, can we just get rid of it? No, it's not. <laughs> Recycling fees are down too. Apparently. Um, you want to speak? Right. We that? discussed. There's a line item under equipment and 21st century furniture that was approved, and we've discussed utilizing that for the walk-ins. Okay. That's about a $75,000. It's sitting there, it was in, you know, four decades ago. Yeah, they, when they renovated that school, that the yes. walk in was never touched. It's yes. still from 1966. Well, 75000 to cover 230, 260, right? There were other walk ins that were included in that. The ones that we're speaking of are Queen Anne's County High School specifically. Yeah. And it's just for those that are the 1960 units. There are others that we're trying to plan and give some forethought to so that again we can give the commissioners some idea that in two years we'll be replacing the school in three years we'd like to replace that school but because that line item wasn't funded we believe that we can find the funds elsewhere you okay. can do Queen Anne's County well, it speaks to it's a well-loved walk-in that it's still going after it's 40 years so Jim O'Donnell loves it so. yeah <laughs> dogs and refrigerators well loved after 15 years yeah the bus camera, I have a question on bus, what, yes. that, what does that do? That was going to enable, some of, we've had some issues with, you know, uh, cars stopping in front of buses or, right. but, so we were trying to put a camera on the front of the bus that actually captures what's going on in front. Um, you know, hey, we can do without that for, I mean, another year if it push comes to shove. I mean, I will say, as far as our area, I, I think priority, is the walk-in refrigerator and then you know when you start getting the life safety of the um, intercom systems yeah. I mean those you know you're buying parts on eBay to fix them because they're no longer manufacturing those parts after 20 you know years so if something were to happen in a school 
and you don't have that kind of communication, that does scare me. So. Um, and here's a question: Why are we doing track resurfacing when they're redoing? It's, I was going to ask about that. It, it should have been taken out of there. Okay, it, that's exactly. why it wasn't funded. Yeah, yeah. Because it's in because the redoing field plan. Because they're redoing. That's part yes. of their money. Yes, yeah, they're, that's they're correct. Doing okay. okay. So you're correct. Um, okay. Textbooks. How does this impact our textbook plan if we're not getting our yearly stipend of sixty thousand dollars? No, that's six hundred thousand. I'm sorry, six hundred. Mm -hmm. And they took a hundred thousand off, so we have to. We put our textbook sort of rotation. Um, as you know, we started that last year, and um, we have social studies books that are coming forward. We okay. haven't replaced them at elementary 20 in tw exactly twenty years, so it does just back up. Okay. Less well, money means we just approved. And and the good thing though about AP books is that there are not as many. So when you do an elementary adoption, you got several thousand right, right students that are involved. But for an AP adoption, it may be for a this course and that course, just like we have. So for we're going so to be, be able to fund our textbook for this year. Plan. For this year, yes, we'll be able to do. And, and what we can't do, we will just back up. We'll change the order on the rotation. Is the there any discussion about this textbook? line item because it's come up before that we are not supposed to have that in our capital budget. It's clear in the education law that textbooks shouldn't be in the capital budget. But my understanding is it's their decision to do something about this error. Where are we? They have to agree to do that. And that would mean more money in operating. I get all that. Right, have so they even Broach the subject. Well, we 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 brought it up. Yeah, I know we, we did, did. Mm -hmm. but it has not come forward as something that they. Um, you we know, are clearly able to in arrears with. here. Well, that's why that's a one-time one. item. Textbooks are not now. Granted, you may have textbooks every year, but it's pretty clear that's an item that should not sit in an operating in a capital budget. The that's an operating expense. Correct. They did for Back a specific reason for it. one time, yeah, and years ten. later, it's still there. there. Awesome. It keeps it out of MOE. And that they wanted it out of MOE, and that was the whole purpose behind that. That was 2013 or 14 when they yeah. did that. They and did it was, again, supposed to be a so. one-time thing, and it's never been corrected. Yeah. Well, we know. I just wanted to bring it up again. What, you know, as long as they're reasonably doing it, then we just got to find out if you're satisfied with 500000 or 600, you know. I think the issue, the issue is we don't have a choice here, so we have to make do with what we have, and it means we have to rearrange our order. If something gets put off to the next year, then that's just the way we have to work it. So the roof replacements will be done, the fire alarm system will be done. Yes, those are all, so those uh, are all state CIP. Okay. Um, uh, that was the thing you brought to us at last week. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I, I'm just saying it out loud. That we all understand the right. safety and security needs of our school system are taken care of. Mm. Security cameras. Well, that's why I still kind of worry about some of these phone systems and stuff yes. like that down here because I agree. that could impact the same issue. Exactly. You are very and, right. And just for the sake of, um, because we need to make sure our public has some confidence in, you know, what's happening in our schools in the event that a PA system does go down, which is awful, but we do have walkies that we use. So it's not as if, you know, somebody had to be a runner and run up and down the hallways in the event of an emergency. So there are ways to communicate. And we'll also be able to have the alertus system and right. where they'll be able to communicate on the screen that I talked about last time where it pops up and you can communicate. It's just trying to have multiple layers of, you know, <laughs> the cell phones are going to be jammed. So those different That's areas. That's why I'm a little These concerned. systems are not connected. They're independent of each other. If one goes down, one will still operate. Yes, yes, okay. that's correct. But how do they tie into the fire alarm system and everything else that we're upgrading if we're leaving these old systems in place? What if the fire alarm system is, it's a standalone. Okay. I mean, it has its own bells and whistles and then the PA and is strictly. And the 911 system won't be impacted? No, 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 okay. no, no. There's communications in the school and are secondary way to communicate. That's correct. Yes, sir. The, the state funding that was reduced on the fire alarm replacement, yeah. um, how is that impacting that project? It was only $16,000, so we feel pretty confident that we can make that work. What the state has told us is that if more available funding does not come through for fiscal year 2020, which they're still working on, um, luckily, it's only a $16,000 deficit for us. Some counties are looking at huge deficits. 
they will make that the first priority with funding then next year. So that would be our priority number one if we aren't able to make it happen. I think given the, we've been doing a fire alarm system now each year and given the pricing that we're getting, we've looked at bid prices versus cooperative purchasing and there are different ways to be able to make those come in under budget. So right now, I don't have any fear that we're not going to be able to do that fire alarm system based on that. Number. I'm just wondering, where'd they come up with 16,452? No, it's just out of the blue. It's, I think well, it's, it's just, it's a formula that they use that based on our state funding mm -hmm. formula, the 51, 49% split, okay. and okay. then what the available funding is, and then they also look at our enrollment numbers. They look at how much has already been allotted to us for the CIP based on other counties. So we're lucky. <laughs> we are pretty lucky with, there are some counties that are, are planning on full projects that will not be able to yep. do everything. Okay. Some of these fire alarm systems, aren't we, we doing that with some of the grants that have been popping in for safety and security? Not for the, the fire alarms. Each right. We've been requesting for the past several years for CIP um, of replacing those generators, those types of things. So this is like the second, third year, I believe, third year. Oh, okay. So yeah, associated with the yep. On these renovations, these things we're doing for the schools, for uh, central office and central middle. Yes. As that comes in, do you all see it in case you need to send them down a little different path, or are they just doing something and handing it to you and saying, here's what it is? No, it'll be a cooperative effort and something that we continue to work with our consultants on. Um, what we plan for the Board of Education building, there are a couple of variables here, but what we're thinking is that we want to look at three different options, and that's what we've planned. One is a comprehensive renovation to this building, but that includes moving staff off-site, and there would be associated costs there. The second option would look at replacement buildings potentially on this site. Third option would be replacement building at a site yet to be determined. And what we'll be doing is <coughs> as we go through this process, working closely with the county commissioners and hopefully, hopefully getting that feedback and maybe more direction as to which way they would like to see us go. And that may eliminate some of the things that we need to study as well. The wild card with this building is what happens with our alternative program and what the plans are for that. If there is a community use piece, if there is an alternative program piece to this building, then we have to re we have to do the feasibility study to get any type of state funding. Is that was a price tag? What was a million dollars for the feasibility? Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's a two hundred thousand dollar cost for the oh, feasibility. Okay. That would include educational specifications if we do indeed include our. Uh, alternative program or another community use piece that maybe would utilize the space after hours. Um, you know what I'm confusing it with the architecture yeah. that was so much money when we did Stevensville Middle School. Five percent. Yes. Uh, yes. 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 About ten now. Is it really? Mm -hmm. Good. When we do this, or is this a committee, or is this just our group doing this? Or do we, we are definitely going to bring in a committee. Mm -hmm. What they'll be looking at is lots of different environmental factors. They'll be looking at space standards that they'll develop for this building. They'll be pulling in a team of members from the building to get input so that we can develop a scope of what the actual needs are. Again, more of those wild card variables are right now we have a cafe here that serves students. If we're on this site, we probably still need to include that. If we're off site, that may not be necessary, especially if we're closer to one of the other schools. Um, we think about gymnasium space. They currently don't have that here. That would be something that would be very advantageous to that program. So again, there are some different factors that they're going to be looking at depending on which location uh, we're looking at too. It's just me, me as one person speaking. We need to watch the alumni association because politically that's going to be an issue because this school, 1966, there's still a lot of them alive. Yes. And we know that and, those, you know, so I, some what did you ones, say? I didn't hear what you said. The Alumni Association. And we did oh. we had Southersville yeah, okay. and Churchill. Mm -hmm. I mean we had two commissioners fighting on what was from the bulldoze between Centerville and Churchill when they took the school away. We're gonna have that here too. Site. It gets to be a political ring. And Centerville, since it stopped in nineteen sixty six here, there's too many of them still around. Not to, actually, I'm saying this wrong. No, no, you're too many interested right. in alumni people that right. would to have right. this this is where I went to school we're not there this is a historical building yeah. right to them so, so I mean when we do this it's it just at the last minute and then you get the commissioners in on it and they're political they're political so it's going to be 
We totally yeah. anticipated that for both studies, for the study for this building and the study for Centerville Middle School, that it needs to incorporate a huge community mm -hmm. piece because these are staples in the community and there will be a lot of input. There's going to be a lot of feedback and we want to hear that. We want to include the Some community in this <laughs> That's a way to work, but I mean, well, just something's going to come up by now. Absolutely. Just as a suggestion, though, there's that whole field over there. We could build a new Centerville Middle School, move this building and the Arise Academy over to the current Centerville Middle. They'd have the gym, they'd have the coiffe, it would service the students for Arise. It, it would be a win-win situation. And again, this building could actually be turned over to the Historical Society and kept, and you know, we done for tours to and the, educational yeah. pieces. I mean, there's so many things that could be done here. It goes back to the one good thing, remember from Sudler's bill, the old Sudler's bill, it, it goes to the county commission. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, so I, I agree with that. They make a decision on what to do with it. But it's, it's, a, it's a big liability for somebody to take this building. Yeah. I mean, it's something. Well, that's what happened with Sudler's Middle School. Under, well, well, yeah. yeah. Some, and it's used to be some of the high school. But uh, it's, it's a Correct. liability, and that's just something that I, you know, when we go down the path, it's something that's going to. Yeah, it's certainly something we're going to look at. Even traffic through Centerville. I mean, we were all on the other side. It'd be awful nice to have. Mm -hmm. I mean, I always like this to be the county commissioner's office. We moved to the Centerville Elementary with the Turner School and then build a new school out on the other town. But right, you know, that would be perfect. Well, yeah, but they didn't want to do it because commissioners wanted a new building. They wanted the Liberty Building. They didn't want, you know, it, you know. Well, yeah, well, well, we think it's perfect, or what you know, somebody might yeah. think it's reasonable, and then you wouldn't have traffic through Centerville. But it is, you know. Well, there was still the same token that they could have put us in the new building out on Benson Street or somewhere else, but they, they didn't have any interest in doing that. No. Okay. But okay. then they complain about the upkeep and the cost of this building. As we all do. <laughs> okay. But Thank they you. have, and in support of them, they have mentioned in a couple they of have, and we, we And we've talked about. We understand we need, we need a new building for the right. board. And this I a, mean, they do understand. And this is an outdated building. And I mean, that's this, a, is yeah. oh, this is a know. ridiculous no. Mm -hmm. people working everybody concurs on that point so exactly at, right right now this is all we're doing with this i do we have more questions any more questions on this budget on this capital so i need a motion to approve well, capital that's, that's under action item i'm oh, sorry never mind everyone has that yeah thank you thank you for Tammy. so turf field mm -hmm. so, um Mr. Pender is going to display the three contract or MOUs on um, on the screen, but you also have them there in um, your documents <coughs> as well. And so we can go about this. We weren't exactly sure how you wanted to handle it, but we can go about this a few different ways. Mr. Pender has um, an original um, MOU from um, Parks and Rec for grounds. He has our updated. Uh, MOU for grounds and he also has the turf fields MOU we weren't sure if you wanted to go over the grounds one at all um, we can handle it however you want we can um, go through it we have certain parts highlighted that we think are um, of significance to you um, and or you can simply ask your questions so we can go with it however you however you choose in, in the interest of time, I mean, we sure. don't have to go over the grounds maintenance agreement. That's been in place forever, correct? Yes. Well, we updated well, it, made some improvements. Well, so. And there you go. Mm -hmm. I'd like to hear what he has to say on okay. that. Okay. All right. So just kind of to go through this, basically back in 2003, um, to the best of my knowledge, um, we had grounds crews that were Queen Anne's County Public School employees. Yes. Then Parks and Rec took over it. Um, they redid the MOU in 2009 and it's been the same basically ever since um, some items that I wanted to point out to you and you can see where we were at and where we've headed to the number two up there and I, I just highlighted some ones in yellow that one up there says basically that the, they will control all capital projects money goes into their account they control it we've taken that one out um, where, and you'll see in the new one where, hey, it's under our authority and we are the ones that are going to say, hey, yay or nay, I'm working with that. Could you go to the next one? Sorry. There you go. I can't see it, so I apologize. I apologize. No, no, no. You want the next highlight or the next? Yeah, you go to the next highlight, Dr. King, please. So, all right, we're kind of tying these three into here. They wanted to have in this MOU also 
the artificial turf field usage. I wanted to keep them separate simply because the MOU for the turf fields ties into the project open space funding. Totally different source of funding, um, and it's also a 20-year agreement to get that funding from the state. So I highlighted some areas on here. What they originally brought, and when I say they, Parks and Rec, I've worked closely with them about this. They were saying, hey, basically from Monday to Friday, you can have the, the uh, turf field track from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Well, that's, that's really not going to work for us um, because we still have athletic events going on late into the night. If, would you go to the next page, Doctor? Um, basically, this was it. This was the whole entire MOU, like a page and a half, if that. Um, and then they would have exclusive use on the fields um, Saturday, Sunday and then also throughout the whole entire summer. Now keep in mind, this is a community, you know, project that we're going through. So, you know, we are working with Parks and Recs, community groups out there. So I came back, I went through and I found some different MOUs from Howard County, Montgomery County, Anne Arundel, and then Worcester had a, a fairly decent one. And I pulled pieces from all of them to create the two MOUs that we're gonna, ha we have up there now. And then also, I heard concerns from um, the band um, at Ken Allen High School and then the band at uh, Queen Anne's High School, Mr. Wright. Um, so do you want to go to the turf one or do you want to go to the one for the common grounds and review it? We can do either way. So the common grounds is common grounds, the one that we've said, had for years. We've like had that for years. And all I did, if you just want to click on that, Which Dr. Kane. Yes, go to the um, the one that says grounds. Oh, yes, ma'am. So what I did, I, I went through there and really listed out what the schools we have. They didn't have all the schools included in the older one. Um, I went through, and what I've noticed over the past five years, there's not really in the original one laid out, hey, we're going to do this on this date. We're going to cut the grass on these dates. We're going to nothing spells out who's responsible for anything and so we went through and we said hey you know when it comes to say parking lots um it would be like well that's not ours that's yours well where is it in the mou so going through this um we put the capital projects if you could keep going forward um here it lists what uh parks and recreations responsibilities for the common grounds and that excludes the athletic fields Excludes all the athletic fields, or you just You're, that's in another piece. I wanted to keep them separate. Okay. If you keep going, Thanks. all right. So then it lists, you know, Queen Anne's County Public Schools duties, responsibilities for the common grounds of just the grass, the trees, and then keep going, please. Going through, then we start talking about the responsibilities of the athletic fields, the Bermuda, the baseball, softball fields. Those are all items that. Well, are you responsible for the tennis nets? Well, now, back in 2006, you did it one time. Why don't you do it now? All of this goes through and really lays it out. I met with um, Steve Shanley. I hope I'm saying his name right. The director of uh, Parks and Rec, Mike Watson, um, and Robbie Blackston to review all of this. Here is one of the areas where we lacked. And I, I, I highlight this whole entire section because the communication and information sharing is critical to making this work. Um, you know, each year we give them testing schedules. Hey, don't cut the grass on these days. I mean, it's getting really, really hard. Um, recess times, you know, things like that that spell it out prom. Also the athletic schedules, here are the dates. Um, we added on there for um, band directors. These are the dates they wanna use the fields. You have the tournament of bands and then also coming back to us is the Parks and Rec, what they're responsible for communicating with us. Um, and I, I, sitting down with, with those three, I think it's really ironed out a lot of the issues. So it kind of, like I said, spells it out more. Um, and we're not gonna have the kind of hiccups that we've had before of, you know, pointing fingers back and forth of who's responsible for it. So um, that's kind of the, the overall MOU that we want with that. Now the turf, um, MOU. Can we touch on this just for sure. a second? So, removal of ice and snow from our parking lots so that we can have school start 
have a 90 day minute delay mm -hmm. rather than canceling school altogether because our parking lots are not ready. How are we going to handle that in the future? Parks, Parks and Rec handles the parking lots and sidewalks along with the custodians handle that. But they don't get there till 7, 30, 8 o'clock and we want to have school start at 9, 30 and it's not safe. That's been a his historical problem. I'll say this. A lot of times that's sometimes not the case. A lot of it, what our problem is, is the back roads. I mean, are the county back roads, you don't salt them. You know, they're just putting the sand mixture down on them. And also, I will say this, they've had some reorganization at Parks and Rec and, you know, we're talking the night before of, hey, what time are you guys coming out tomorrow? You know, and, and I'll say this, Robbie and his crew, they're pretty much out there at five o'clock. And what they started doing this year was pre-treating the parking lots and the sidewalks. The areas we run into are, are truly the back roads. Uh -huh. um, okay. Yep. Um, state highway. I mean, state state's better because they're they're plowing, they're applying, yeah. pre-treating, and all that. But the back roads, you know, it's you start getting up around the fields and the wind drifting. And this this year was was very strange because it was predominantly up around Sellersville, Crumpton area that we had snow, um, and down south it wasn't as, as much. Um, past couple of years once it snowed it seems like we've stayed in this cold pattern um, you know of below freezing so it's not really melting as quickly but this year was a little bit different with that but uh, Rob Robbie does a pretty good job with that so and I see here that we made this MOU a term of five years yes that's basically what they have been in the past and okay. I didn't want to tie this into the turf because Correct. then you're tying it into a 20 year um, I was only just saying instead of how about making it three and then reassessing it, or it's just so, this, there's a can, language in here that's yes, reassessed. We can, okay, and you'll cool. see that in the turf, because we know that there's going to be changes. We can put addendums to it and change it, meet. There's also a quarterly schedule of when we're going to meet about different things so that we can say, hey, this isn't going too well. You know, like next week we have a meeting with the ADs and um, Robbie about the turf fields to make sure we're on schedule for, when I say turf, I'm sorry, Bermuda fields, to make sure that, hey, they're up and ready to go for when school starts, and we don't have what we had last year. So, just um, a question: Page six, you have tournaments replacement of sod from funds. What is, I don't know. So, what that means. Yeah. Um, when they originally installed um, Bermuda, part of the thinking was when you have the tournaments, a certain portion goes to like the athletic boosters they're going to put in. Say like a thousand dollars would go to the athletic boosters. The other portion of that money that they make off this goes to paying Parks and Rec spraying the lines, setting up the fields, like say Hogan's Lacrosse. And then there is a portion of money that goes into an account to help maintain the fields, like buy equipment, you know, for the Bermuda fields. Now they have been doing that with the tournaments that they have, yes. They now have they're not okay. they're not it started out years ago you would have probably two or three tournaments at each school. But what's happened is there's no way I wouldn't say no way it's hard for those fields to recover by the time school starts so like this year we only have one tournament Hogan's lacrosse um, and it will be at Queens County High School and White Marsh um, it just the goal areas will never re recover the field hockey areas never recover so the funding for that is not as large as it used to be and you'll see kind of on the turf side of it of printing that out splitting that 50 50 and putting that money to help catch up on that part yeah, I have questions about that when I we get thought. there but so I just wondered about that. <coughs> like when home does he come over here to they turn in something to uh, parks and rec the parks and rec goes through and looks at it they send it to us we review it look at it and go hey um, you know that's fine or we need to adjust this a little bit or whatever the I, in my mind, some of the money probably needs to increase. And do we go around and find out what other tournaments are, what their other yeah. places are yes. and we Parts, get a, yep. a good feel? Of what and I'll say this, the, the Hogan's Lacrosse is really spelled out of how many games you can have on the fields, the length of time on the fields, um, what they're responsible for, how they're to set up, how they're to run the tournament. Um, one item we ran into a couple years ago, uh, it's raining outside and uh, you, you want to have your tournament well you, uh, nah, you know so now we have a monitor there that has says hey nope you know or yes go ahead these fields are fine um we can close them down if the uh, weather doesn't permit yep yes sir you bring their own um goals and stuff 
or we provide? Because I was trying to figure that out on the turf field. Thing. Whatever goals we have there, they, they use, but I'll, they bring in quite a few of them because really, if you think about it, we only have two lacrosse fields at each school. Um, and the county has increased their amount of fields they have. So now White Marsh can accommodate a lot more than what we were used to use at our schools. So that's another reason you're kind of not seeing um, a larger tournament based at our schools. They're staying in Anaheim County too. That's true too. They're going oh. back forth to Crofton and Bowie. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are. Back up to, we have the sole authority to go forward on the fields based on weather, or it's a collaboration with Parks and Rec? No, we do. Really? Yep. They agreed to that. They have to pay. Actually, the tournament group has to pay for a um, a field supervisor. Good. So. And they're required to have job. bathrooms and whatever needs to be. They done. bring in their porta potties. We do not open up anything. They. Locked I mean, We don't have any. They have no, only the fields they have access. That's to. correct. Yep. Yep. Only the fields. Okay. You want to talk about turf? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so again, just to kind of go back on the um, the MOU the county turned in, it didn't really spell out anything, and there were some things that I had heartburn over and concerns of scheduling and all that. Um, so again, like I said, I went through several other counties that had already instituted programs and pulled out different things that I thought you know, was beneficial. Um, I heard from both principals at the high schools. I also heard from both ADs, reached out. Um, Mr. Wright sent an email about, you know, what his concerns were at uh, Ken Island. And then also, forgive me, I'm forgetting the band director's name at uh, Ken Island. Just because what was presented, I think, in a um, Parks and Rec advisory meeting was not correct. I mean, it was something that they were proposing, the original one, um, MOU. The MOU that we have now, um, is, is that up there, Dr. Yeah, King? Oh, thank you. So, and I, I'm just throwing out some concerns that, that my group had. Um, in the original MOU that was proposed, there's no language in there really that says we have any control over anything. And when I say control, I'm like saying, where is the field going to go? You know, what are the dimensions? In the new MOU we have, it spells out the installation process. It spells out who's responsible. Um, again, it's still going to be a group effort. Um, it was scheduling. That, I highlight that area up there. This is probably going to be one of the most crucial pieces. Um, and if you look up there, we have the, you know, dates for the graduation. We have the athletic schedules. All of that information, we got to have as soon as it's ready because if we have Parks and Rec going to be using the turf fields and then third-party groups, you know, we can't have, well, you scheduled it. Well, no, we didn't have it. We can't have, well, um, we just decided on a whim we're going to have this uh, tournament. It's really got to be spelled out and communicating between them. One of the areas we changed up there, um, we have priorities until 7 p.m. in the evening um, on the track and the high school. And if, at the last line there, um, basically, we have the right to supersede anything. We, we know that games are not going to be over at 7, all right? Parks and Rec knows that, hey, really, in the fall and in the spring, there's not going to be a whole lot of, of rental <coughs> during the time because you figure you got JV, you got varsity, you got boys, you got girls lacrosse. It's really going to be used up. In the fall, you add on top of there the band, <coughs> um, you know, and on Saturday. So that's one of the areas. We put some language in there about the MPSA, SSAA fall sports season. Um, we put in there also about the band, um, what days they, they need to use it, like Mr. Wright practices on um, – Saturday morning. Um, the really only day that we're kind of giving up is Sunday. Well, I think so. that's what a lot of us were concerned about. Whether these, you know, I mean, we've heard it said, these aren't our fields, these are Parks and Rec's fields. We wanted to make sure our organization and our teams were taken care of. 
what else is left over they can have. But I want every one of our teams who need to utilize these fields to have fair advantage. And I, well, 7 o'clock, I understand, because boys lacrosse and football all start at 7. Yeah, but if, 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 you re, if you go back and read through it, it talks about games. So when games and all are going on, we, we supersede anything that goes on. Okay, as I could. Yeah. Play, and playoffs or anything like that. It, it's playoffs are in there. I mean, it spells okay. out everything in there of what needs to occur. And the bottom nutshell, we have priority. Yes, sir. They follow us, yep. and if they don't, and with notice and stuff, mm -hmm. so. And we, would never, we would never be bumped from our field. No. And I went through this with uh, Parks and Rec with Steve and uh, Robbie and uh, Mike um, probably for about three hours just line by line by line going through it, just making sure everybody understands. Um, I so the only thing that wasn't covered was whose custodian was going to take care of when it was Q QACPR. So I, they, they didn't think this was a big deal, but I've been to these championships yep. for my son's football. And when you get yep. there and the gates are closed, it becomes a big deal. Yep. So or yeah. I have to go buy toilet paper because yeah. nobody stocked the bathrooms. And the bathroom's backed up. Who's yeah. going to take it's care huge. of that? So it's, it's, it's a huge, huge deal for the parents well, I know it is. arriving when no one's there to open the handicap accessible entrance. So in the MOU, when it is a Queen Anne's County public school event, we're responsible for cleaning it, maintaining it. When it comes up- And the monitor. And the monitoring it. When it is a parks and rec activity or a third party, they are responsible for making sure it is clean and set up. I mean, it, it puts it in there. There's also language in there about, hey, if we have a group that's really not uh, maintaining our facilities, um, there's a checklist of, hey, you've been warned You've been through this. We're not allowing you to come rent this out anymore. Um, so it does spell that out. I don't foresee large tournaments um, at our high schools because it's one field. I see this being more of uh, teams wanting to practice on it, like third party teams, like a lacrosse club or a, a soccer club or something. I don't foresee us having you know a huge tournament there because again it's one field and you know you got 28 teams come in you're not going to be able to get them all on one field. but even if it's a small group we needed to clarify that and that i think was our biggest concern well, it wasn't clear people might have had ideas of what it meant it really was not clear how that was going to go from one side school, school system to public on the other side and at what time that began on. and ended. And you, you could have championships going on, those kinds of yeah. things, yes. Yeah. But it's it it's spelled out in there. I mean, this it kind of got better. blown out there. But Okay, so the 10 a.m. on Saturdays, it, the band you, director said that's enough time for them to get out there and do what they need they to do. They supersede. Okay. So we have, like, I have Mr. Wright's list. He's got uh, uh, seven or eight dates in mm -hmm. September and October, uh, basically September 14th to uh, October 26th, where he needs it. So they go on the calendar. Beyond 10 o'clock. Because yes. they're on the yes. field Saturday So they go on, right? yeah, so they go, say, till 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. So that goes on there. Hey, you can't use this because... But they plan They plan ahead and tell them ahead, right? Because they need to be able to plan yes. for, the, for the rec programs yep. that might want to use So it. that's why, when you go back, you'll look at it, I mean, like, you know, the band schedule of activities. It needs to come out July 17th for okay. what we're going to have. And he's the, got four years planned. Yes. I mean, he's very... And he communicates really with, with Jolene Gottlieb um, about building access and usage. So mm -hmm. most of that we have tied into there and, and put into that place. But, I mean, I know they have tormented bands. And mm -hmm. you have Ken Island High School, which their band is making a comeback and becoming larger. Um, so it's... I feel it's pretty solid. Project that makes money in this thing. Yes, sir. What hooks they have on that? Because a lot of times I know we like to docks and boat ramps. There's certain things you can't do. What did you say? Um, I didn't hear that. Like our boat ramps and, and things. We've got in arguments with Waterman and Queen Anne's County citizens. If it's popular in open space, anybody gets it. You cannot use this. one person or somebody else. So you get people, you know, from out of county or. This MOU, we had to submit with that yeah. to him, yes. 
So they have the copy of the MOU along with, you know, this is what the agreement is. So that is, is submitted to them. So can somebody, can somebody outside of Parks and Rec rent our field? Somebody outside of Parks and Rec, yes, can rent our field. If they meet the requirements of the insurance um, and, and all of that, yes, they can. But it's on a, it's on a low priority. Uh, yeah, it's. I would say it's on the third tier, basically, when you look at it. The so priority Parks is... And Re Parks and Rec is in charge of that? Yes. Okay. So, so they'd have to come in, you or somebody, and say, make sure it's, it's open? Parks, Parks and Rec would handle that. Okay. And then... The scheduling of that? Yes. Mm -hmm. And the monitoring of them? Mm -hmm. Yep. So my last question, yes, I'm not in total disagreement with it, but why are they eliminated from using the announcement booth or the scoreboards? For championship games, they usually and, do a play caller. And that's something that we may come back and look at, mm -hmm. but I don't... Don't give it up now. Yeah, it, it, what I'm saying is, if we can upgrade our system to do something that's basically handheld mm -hmm. or wireless, yes. Right now, everything's hardwired, okay. and... So I, I go in and really... Yeah, I'm kind of nervous about, nervous about that. nervous about that, I'm sorry. Um, you have to go into the press box to operate the um, the clock, the PA system, all those things. It's not like a handheld device. You have and to know what you're so doing. So then, yeah. we're, yes, we're opening that up. Who's going to certify them? Who's going to you know make sure that it's used properly? And we've had this problem with um, people renting out the auditorium, um, and that's why we instituted. Hey, if you want to use the sound system, you have to pay for a student who runs the sound booth system. You know, to that. I mean, this is all something new mm -hmm. that we're just going to have to go through and see how it happens. And you have the language in here that addendums to this agreement yes. will be made from time to time when it, you know, it's necessary. So that would. But I think that's a good idea, that. Michelle, because that that makes it more of a. I've been to schools game. where they it's, do use them, yeah, and I've been to schools where they don't. Big difference. Big difference. It's nice when you can hear what the call is and who makes right. play and exactly. you know, parents love that. At some but point, we have somebody run it for them. And well, and that's what, that's yeah. Yeah. And that, that's it's something. Like the auditorium. Then. Just oh, yeah. Office and, you know. We've been out the auditorium for years to out, you know, outside sources, and we would come back, and being a band, I mean, a drama parent, mm -hmm. and the curtains would be sliced. Mm -hmm. The, mm -hmm. you know, the, we'd have missing equipment. You didn't the, 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 PA, the system that, uh, in the box upstairs would be, I mean, totally destroyed because, mm -hmm people were just in there doing whatever. I mean, we uh, things were stolen. I mean, yeah. so yes, so this to me covers but I, I our box. But I don't think it should be omitted. I think no, no, no. the, well, no, the no, part that should be in there is, is just like you do, is, is hire somebody. If they yeah. want to use it, then they well, pay that, for We could put an addendum to that. I yeah. just, at the I think time, that's important. Yeah. You know, understand. Yeah. Put the brakes on somewhere, and then we'll go from there. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. Kim's right. That. I mean, even by accident, people carrying our equipment away, well, and you run it down. It, and that's you why might never get it back. Now, when somebody Especially rents out our buildings on a Saturday or Sunday, they're required to have a custodian to be there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, you know, Monitor that it. has stopped a lot of our issues that we've had with things being damaged or destroyed. Does it still happen sometimes? Yes. But it's really I'm limited. I'm talking 10 years yeah, ago. Oh, yeah. Barely oh, yeah. 10 years ago. Um, okay. Dance so... The, um, one of the items we were talking about were the fees, mm -hmm. and I want it to be reimbursed for our lighting. Um, and if you look up there, we have on there about, you know, the time frames for that. The 50% artificial turf replacement, you have about 10 to 12 year life cycle on that turf. So part of the portions of that fund will go into there. The other part would go into field maintenance, athletic <coughs> fields at Queen Anne's Ken Island High School. Um, as you heard me say earlier, those tournament fees that we used to get from, they're no longer as large as they used to be. So, you know, that money will go help to maintain the other fields. Um, but but the rest is general fund. That, I'm sorry, on that topic, general fund. You mean the commissioner's general fund? No, 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 no. I don't understand what that picture you, certain count, is. Certain county commissioners would like for the whole entire pot to be turf replacement. Like and they talked about that any, in the last meeting. Yeah, yeah. Any money that's generated goes into there. The agreement they signed here has 50% goes in turf replacement. The other 50 goes into maintaining the athletic field. As I thought of one of the original plans was to some input to the schools themselves. They were going to. I tried that. 
and it, I mean, isn't that done? I was told that's done in Anne Arundel, that's done in other counties. I, I, Real I, small amount. I though, couldn't tell you that. Uh -huh. I, I will say, instead of the money going directly, okay, so say you got $100, 50 goes into replacement turf, $50 would go then into Queens County uh, athletic account. Now it goes into the account to maintaining the field. It's still going back to the schools to maintain. I mean, right. it's just not going into, like, say, the athletic budget to purchase. Yeah, because we used to have a separate budget. Yeah. Okay. It, so All you right. won't be purchasing so still, jerseys. Or like that. Still getting it, though. Okay. Yes. You had a, I'm sorry. In eight to ten years, when the field has to be replaced, who's paying for that? That's going to be uh, the county, along with whatever funds we have here. But the county's going to be responsible for replacing That's, it. And if we have $2,000 or 200000 The what we had thought, discussed and talked about was the county is fully aware that they have to, county commissioners are replace, have to replace it. That's something that regular company that yeah, it, Yep. It doesn't have to, it's not going to come out of our yeah, okay. account. Yep. Yeah. But you're right, there will be a change in um, leadership and all that. You're right. But yes, there is. And like when we're putting the field in, are they taking consideration of tracks around the field to upgrade them or take care of it? Enough, I mean, everybody make sure that that's going to work? So, yes. Um, they started last week um, at Ken Island High School, I don't know if you noticed, um, and they are at Queen Anne's County High School. The delay at Queen Anne's County High School was over a permit. Um, there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, litigation tied into this of, you know, when you start moving soil and dirt and runoff and all that. Mm -hmm. So getting the notice to proceed. Um, they put down steel plates, they put down padding where they're coming across because you're going to take 250 dump truck loads of dirt out and bring in 250. We have, uh, I met with um, uh, county uh, engineers last week. We had different companies come out to give proposals to resurface the tracks. Um, I will say this, the, the one good thing about resurfacing the tracks and doing the turf is the drainage system that we'll have are especially at Queen Anne's County High School, you won't have the soccer or the football uh, players standing in, you know, four inches of water every time it rains. Um, you know, same thing down to Ken Island. We walk that track. That track, you know, needs to be resurfaced. We were only able to resurface the start portion about five or six years ago. So, explain to him the difference between the two tracks and what the plan is. Remember, there's a difference between the track at Ken Island and the track at the, the track at Ken Island is a, what they call a true, you know, regulation size track. The track at Queen Anne's County is a European track. So trying to switch that one from, uh, you know, meters and yards and back and forth, they're working on that now. When we met with the companies of how we can lay that out to actually make it more compatible. So it will not, we will not have as many lanes as Ken Island has just because that's when it was built and there's only so much money, but, you know, resurfacing it and actually trying to lay out the true start finish in the exchange of, you know, the batons and all that um, is, is pretty tricky. But I thought that was did. the plan. In the second year, Queen Anne would be expanded to an eight lane track and those stands would be moved back and made ADA compliant. I'm not sure. I, I, I'm not sure if that's going to happen um, money wise. So then we could never have a state. In comparison across the Eastern Shore, the field width at Queen Anne's County High School falls within regulation of MPSSAA. Um, trying to ask the county commissioners, I mean, this is all based on upon what kind of money we're going to get from them. Um, we were trying to add those lanes there and move back the uh, bleachers, mm -hmm. the cost associated with that is pretty large. They were talking about doing that in year two. Yep. I mean, right. that's, that's... What's large? At large as in what? So when you go to Ken Island, you'll see there's eight lanes there. Right, I mean, how much you're talking about? It would have to come out to yeah, two dollar. additional dollar. lanes. Dollar. 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 Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, how much? Captain Kelly, Because we're still about talking about a disparity. Yeah, yeah. yeah, between one and, two, one and two million. Million? Yeah. Oh, oh. Because yeah. you got to add two trans two track lanes, you've got to move that whole set of bleachers and the field box back, yep. that fencing, you now have to yeah, be ADA compliant. Yeah, but if that's the only way to become ADA compliant, well, why would we... If you don't tamper with the stand, you, you don't have to be. Yeah. 
it'll be compliant. But we would never be able to have a state tournament here because we aren't state. We we can. Regular. I went through and, and right. dug up the regulations okay. as far as because that came up. Yes, you're right. The soccer, what the athletic director there was saying wasn't wasn't totally accurate. Okay. So when you go look at the width of the field was the issue. Mm -hmm. It falls within and actually we're I want to say if you're looking at the Bayside Conference, Ken Island High School has the largest width. But the track was an issue too. But the for track, field yes. Events. If we can change it over and get it to the 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 newer version of right. it. Right. Yes, that will work out. But again, these are all items that you know, I'm, I'm kind of at well, the mercy they, of. Of course they cost money. Yeah. I mean, I get that. Yeah. But it's almost like right off the bat, we got disparities here. Disparities here between the two schools, between our disabled residents. Um, I know it costs money to be uh, equal, but sometimes that's more important. I, I, mm. I get that. I we do. might have to rally on that. So the I, state is not going to do anything to make up for the time? difference in compensation. So this, this is all county funded, except for the um, open, space. open space, yes. And the county didn't look at those disparities? They, they have. They have. And it's... Mm -hmm. I got the commissioners from North County would be concerned. Yeah, it's well, and that's probably because there was X number of dollars and they had to shift around. I get that, but I'm kind of hoping we can and it's not written that's not a provision stone. in yeah. the future to try to get this more equal and equitable for everyone involved and it's and if it costs money it costs money maybe there's a state grant out there that would address that that hasn't been looked at mm -hmm. I, I would like us not to just drop this issue no, it's like i said it's still on the table but again i'm kind of at the mercy of i know yeah. i know but we get these two and they're at the mercy of the queen Anne. yes sir are we losing anything no as in, I mean, well, I mean, you always want something better. You're putting all this money in to get turf fields. I'm assuming we're gaining this turf fields. People want to play on them. They're nicer. Well, I can tell you. So, what do we? We know. I just want to do all of a sudden have this happen, and all of a sudden somebody say, "Well, we lost this or lost that, spending all this money, and we didn't spend another." You say a million dollars. I, I was, I was thinking more like a thousand, but you know what? You're fine when you talk to me. I, I'm yeah. almost like ten cents short. <laughs> no, it, what we went through last year as far as having to move playoff games mm -hmm. to um, our opponent's field uh, because our field uh, was not playable. Um, loss of revenue for the uh, athletic department, also the concession stands. Um, County lost a lot. Yeah, we're, we're, we took a pretty big hit what last was year. That, this, this is past us. Was that our fault or Parks and Recreation? It was weather related. Weather. It was a culmination of things. Somebody else didn't have weather related. Yeah, it's a culmination. Thing. Culmination of things. Weather, we took a beating on and just... But so did other counties deal with it. No, you're right. And then just proper maintenance wasn't performed on it. And that's well, internal or external from Parks and Rec? That's, that's well, let's not throw anybody under the yeah. bus here. Let's just say it happened. Well, I know, but I just don't happen again. No, that's and that's true. why... That's why it's I, I can't change the past. I only get work on the And future. that's why part of the MOU has in there of getting the money to generate into those fields and then also the uh, the language piece of communication of you know exchanging the information and all that um, is in there because I, I need the input from both athletic directors of hey here's what's going on at the fields you know and who's monitoring those fields I mean now like after last year I had all of them take pictures because everybody talks about it but then two three months go by and you forget about how bad it was so now we have the pictures to document what it looked like, you know, and so we can sit down and talk about that. Um, but I don't see a, a huge loss for, you know, things. Okay. Any other questions? Any more questions on the MOUs? Thank you. I really appreciate it because we were kind of in the dark of what was going Sorry on. So that. we appreciate the update on it. This is in line of where we've talked originally and where we approved it originally where right. we wanted to go. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The next item is the handbook. I just want to um, talk to you all. We, we, I did read when I reread re the whole thing again, and that's when I noticed that it does require a um, um, approval at a business meeting. So that's why we're delaying the vote on the business meeting, the approval. But I wanted to make sure we're solid and everybody's 
got all the changes and understanding of the final draft so that that will go quickly at the business meeting. So that's what we have the time for here is to talk of any other changes that you may have recommended. I gave one to Jackie, just in editing. I didn't know what was at, at the bottom of one of the pages. Um, so that was my input. Did anybody have any other? Sharon, you Well, I had mentioned, uh -huh. so I don't know. I guess I better pull it up, about fixing this vacancy section. You know, there is a law on the books that dictates to us how vacancies will be handled. Mm -hmm. And that is referenced in this verbiage. But we need, in my opinion, and Darren can weigh in on this, to reference where we got that language from. If it's in the state law, education law, that these two paragraphs are what we follow, we just need to recognize that in here. There yeah, would be so. no confusion in the future like we had this time if somebody said, as Comar states or as the education law states, there was a law passed in 2014 for this revision. It was never documented in this book where these revisions came from. So I am a little concerned about it saying, the governor shall appoint a new member to fill a vacancy on the county board for the remainder of that term and until a successor is elected. I think that should read or, because based on where they fall in, and I'm going to refer this to Darren anyway, where they fall into fulfilling the step footsteps of the person they're replacing depends on Time frame. the election for the next year. Mr. Smith will run in an election next year mm -hmm. based on the new law. Okay, so we, you want to... So I want to quote the law. I just want exact. that recognized in our handbook. You help us with and that. And what we need to take out and what's not important. Okay. So I, there's not confusing verbiage. I, I think putting the verbiage in to reflect whatever is currently the law so that your handbook is up to date is the right way to go. I'm always hesitant to, to suggest in a handbook that there actually be cites to statutes or Comar provisions because those change. They get recodified, they, they get tweaked, they get a point one added, it and then you next thing you know, you've got to you change your handbook. Mm -hmm. I would rather it be that if I recommend the board do anything is that if you have a handbook committee or anybody who simply wants to take the task on is periodically look at your handbook and if you see some change that you catch, maybe before I do even, that a law has changed or you've been following legislation that requires a change, then that's the time to revisit your handbook and make that correction. But I, but I think for this one, since we know the statute has certain language, I would recommend you just include the language in here. And for the first two paragraphs, I think the first paragraph could actually go away and the second paragraph is very well defined. In the case of a vacancy on a county board, on our county board, the governor shall appoint a qualified person to serve on the county board until a successor is elected and qualified. And that's all based on when they step into the position based on who they're replacing. If it's in the second year, the verbiage is here for that. If it's in the first year, it's in there. And that was all predicated on House Bill 1033 that changed in 2014. Yeah. Kelly. Kelly. Why it says yeah. elected and qualified. Well, that's why my I think we should take out that first paragraph. Well, no, no. I'm just saying, why yeah. don't we have a qualified successor, successor is elected? Because aren't they qualified before they're elected or appointed? Well, well and actually, qualifies should probably precede elected anyway. That's exactly qualifies what and yeah. elected, yeah. So a qualified successor. Well, uh, they elected. mentioned a qualified person appointed, so that means they, we could do without that last qualified word. You're right. I, yes, I'm just saying, yes, I think that's a, a good idea. Unless you qualify, because that's already predicated early in the in the yeah, in the I, process. I, yeah. I, I just thought that that word was. I would take that last qualifies out leave that second paragraph as it is and get rid of paragraph number one. We've got the verbiage from the law and the third They had to qualify before fourth. they could be elected anyway, yeah. so why is it? What page is it? I'm on it's on page 21. 21. Oh, oh, yours on 21. Only says the old handbook, of the old handbook. I don't know where it is. Because 16 reads, if the vacancy occurs before the filing deadline for candidates for the primary election That's that is held paragraph. in the yes. second year yes. of the term, yes. the individual appointed shall serve until a successor is elected yes. at the next general election and qualifies. That's on page 16. Those two paragraphs are what we need to attach the law to. Well, that is, just, you know, that's, that's simply a sort of modified version. Of, the, the law is the what law. you should put in here. Mm -hmm. The law has the word qualifies. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Okay. So, so okay. my recommendation simply be, Captain Kelly, is that I just send to you 
Exactly. How it should be written. This, this subparagraph be written. Yeah. pulled from the statute, mm -hmm. and that's what you include in your okay. book. And there's two. There. The second part is the other. It's not just that third paragraph. Well, I'm on page 21. Y'all are on page 16. There's two paragraphs that need to be, uh, yeah. that come out of that law statement. Yep. The, yes. Both of those need to be incorporated. I think what we had in our original book, the first paragraph can go away. I mean, can, um, yeah, go away altogether. The second one can stay and take out that last. So, D Darren, if you, if you could yeah. but just write it up the way it matches. And I would that. copy everybody on it. Okay. Because then everyone can look at it, and then we're, if we're okay with it, we'll put it in there and we can approve it. And then the. If, yeah. for, the pu like for the public, for the record, it's, it's section 3 10, capital A 01 of the education article, the Maryland Code. And I apologize for not having the um, draft up. So um, I also mentioned that we had kind of written the policy on um, policy development based on the handbook verbiage as well. So under policy development in our new revision, where is that? Uh, yeah, where, what does that say? I need to get this um, attachment up here. I'm sorry, I apologize for that. Okay, I'm still got MOUs up here. Yeah, <laughs> Let up. me get there. Sure, we'll wait. Because this paragraph under par um, policy development is how we worded the policy itself. So we need to make sure that stays the same uh, for both. Here's the policy so we Great. can make sure the mm -hmm. book matches that. That was the only other thing I had. Hey, is it page seven? Um, Let's look. Page 16. Seven. 16. Policy development, yeah. page eight. The on the new, mm -hmm. on the, your 14 most in the current book. Let me bring. So your most there. current version is policy development. It starts on page eight. Okay, let me get there. Sorry. There it is. So, Ms. Harler, are you saying? I'm looking for oh, the, okay. Okay. here we go. I'm getting the attachment. I'm sorry, I didn't have the handbook up, the draft. Mm -hmm. And what page? Eight. Eight. Great. Yes, it is the intent of the Board of Education under policy development. That needs to be the same as our statement is in our policy development policy. That's where we got this statement is was it? from here. So we just need to make sure they match. Is it uh, Board of Education, Queen Anne's County, the board, to put policies, serve the guidelines. Yeah, it looks like it is functioning in accordance with the board's mission statement. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, I would suggest we do the same in the handbook that we do on the policy. I will leave the mission statement when you pull this document up is a link. And you can go straight to the Queen Anne's County mission statement from the policy. We should do that from the handbook as well. Make mission online. statement a live link to our current mission statement so people can go and read that if they choose. Board develops its policies. Yes, that says exactly what our policy development says. Perfect. Good. So what is the change you want to make? Make sure. Uh, just make mission statement a live link. So when they click on it, it takes us to our actual mission statement, okay, which Jack, I think has not changed since we started working right, on it this. Hasn't. Okay. I that on the Those were my two things. Okay, great. Any other recommended changes to the handbook? We we'll feel excited if we can get this approved. And the only, mm -hmm. North, yeah, and again, I want to bring this up just mm -hmm. so we're all on the same page. Is about the Wednesday, the third Wednesday of the month meeting that page. we. I'm looking. I apologize. I just saw it in here. The time is no longer in there. The time is no longer there. That way we are making it as flexibility. Based flexibility on the board. for our members. Just make sure we give the public plenty of notice of and the time. And that, I think, should be reflected in. Uh, it should just be announced at the regular meeting. We always, meeting. just like we do regular meetings, yeah, it's not going to change. Um, well, but we're not being held to a time like we were for the last five years. Yeah, four years. And that's why we need to make sure we get an announcement out about yeah. what that particular Wednesday meeting sure. time yeah. is. Yeah. Be it at night, be it during the day, make sure we announce it in our work sessions, I mean our um, regular Agreed. business meeting, and we get it on our website in a timely manner. Okay. So you have business meetings are held at a specific, specified below unless mm -hmm. notice to the contrary is given at a previous business meeting. The first Wednesday of each month, the third Wednesday of each month for a work session as needed. 24. Right. So and maybe under that put a bullet, times to be announced. At 
just another bullet, fourth it, bullet, times also to be announced. Here that if, if special meetings arise, we let everybody know right within 24 hours. Well, that's us, our okay. group. Okay, I see what you mean. Not the public. I mean, it'd be nice to give the. No, we I, do. We do give them if we have well, a special we, meeting. That, right. Um, we because know it's a business yeah, meeting. Then, because I believe the old manual, it was 72 hours for board notification, but I could be okay, wrong. Just or 48. Make sure that we're all okay with that. Yeah, I, I would. I would just add something about times to be announced. Add because they're going to vary. You can do that. Every mess, every effort is made to schedule items. Okay, no, that's not the balance. Yeah, maybe under um, even the first one, our first Wednesday of each month. That's a, that's a standard. That's a standard. We could yeah, actually so put our time in there, but that's a standard. The third Wednesday, an okay. asterisk times to be announced, and then under um, the next paragraph with the three bullets, another asterisk times to be announced. Covers them both. We can Covers do that. Them all. We'll because do that. there have been times where we've had to, I believe, one time move a regular. Well, we move regular um, business meetings based on holidays. July's a perfect example. Sure. So it's mm -hmm. not going to be the first Wednesday, but appropriately so. Dr. It's too close to the holiday. What's the state law say? How much notice do we have to it, for us to meet? Let's say we want to meet next week or tomorrow. How much notice do we have to get the public? It's as soon as possible within 48 hours. That's preferable, but it's as soon as as soon as possible. Okay. If we have an emergency meeting and we only have 24 hours, they're only going to get 24 hours too. Right, exactly. Yes. And, and, and it's emergency, and right. that's why yeah. they, you have that. Well, the only reason we're bringing this up is because for the last since 2015, when we changed this book, hmm. we were tied to an 11 a.m. to two. P PM yeah, I'd say meeting on this third Wednesday of the month, and that was not, it's not oh, always, you yeah, know, I agree with new members can't always do that. So by opening this up, it allows us a lot of this extra time to meet. Which we need. Okay. Which, yeah, we needed the flexibility. Right. Thank you. And the so Dick, as far in advance for the OMA Act as can be, but if we have an emergency arise and even o us only have 24 hour notice, we give the public 24 hour notice, I'm but not, I'm we, not we just concerned. have to file. We've been smacked for that. We've been smacked in this county for not publicizing meetings properly. Oh, so yeah, we, we want to make sure properly. we do it right. That's it's why. Sure. What was the fourth bullet? That um, just it's times to be there. announced. Times to be it's announced. Up there and okay. figure it out. Or an asterisk under both sections and not even another bullet. Just put times to be announced. It's an asterisk to each segment, um, the two paragraphs, because that's going to be predicated on the group, right. the time of year, whatever. Okay. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you for input. Sure. Perfect on the policy part. Thank you. Okay. Next item is uh, future meetings and events. School board meeting, July 10th. The 17th is a work session. Um, that is our. Uh, let's see. That will be. We have it scheduled to be the 11 to 2, but we can change the time on that if you want. Once. We get the we approve it. Approve it. We approve it at the July 10th meeting. Okay. Um, and what's the 24th scheduled time? The 24th was our meeting to discuss the uh, superintendent's um, evaluation. Did we have time and for just that? Just a yet? reminder to everybody: the June 26th is to provide your information, your um, recommended evaluation for the superintendent to Jackie by the 26th of June. Don't but July 20th. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. that one. All right. And I know you had it checked on I'm on the wrong, paper, yeah. So you, you, you had it. Okay, well, let me do that. Go ahead, what, Tammy? We'll finish the meeting. The, yeah, let's finish on this, the future meetings. Correct. Um, the school board work session on July 24th. That is not the third Wednesday. It's the last one of the month. So can we... Correct. Before, can we just say 5 p.m.? We can. And I think I have right. that on my message And is that just an executive team? Is that just the, just the board meeting? Yes. Tentative. There's yeah. no... The exec we'll team doesn't need to be here. Confirming it now. Right. Okay. So and that's for the evaluation. Be dedicated July, to that. What? July 24th, 5 p.m. And that is just board members. For the evaluation? Yes. The board members and Darren? What was July 24th? And then the 31st is with the super. Yes. Yeah. The 31st. What time do we have for that one? Or do we? Leave it in there. Right, right, right. Um, we did not have the 24th originally in there. It was tentative. 
and it's tentative. Okay. We'll talk about that at the next uh, 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 closed session. The Our work session is the 17th, right? Yes. That's right. still going to be 11 to 2. Right. Unless we change really it. Understand right, right now. Right. 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 right now, 11 to 2. That's why I think that's why I put that in there. We're already I'll conflicting that for the session. Okay. All right. That's fine. Okay, and I skipped one. I forget. I skipped current action 3.01 capital budget. We need to um, motion to approve the capital budget as presented earlier in this meeting. So moved. Second. I have a motion and second to approve the capital budget as presented in the meeting. Mrs. Wright. Board members, please respond when I call your name. Captain Kelly? Yes. Ms. Harper? Yes. Ms. Harlow? Yes. Ms. Morset? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. I have five of the affirmative. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> and so I need a motion to move into closed session. And then we'll, we will be finished at the end of the closed session. Get that to Ms. Harper. Here you go. Tammy. Here you go. Tammy. I'll turn it in. Oh, I have, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Pursuant to the general provisions, Article 3-305 and 3-104, the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County will meet in closed session to protect the privacy or reputation of individuals concerning a matter not related to public business, to consult with staff, consultants, or other individuals about pending or potential litigation, to consult with counsel, to discuss an administrative item, to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance, evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials of whom this body has jurisdiction, or any other mat personal matter that affects one or more specific individuals. Do I have a second on that motion? Second. I have a motion and second to move into closed session for the items mentioned just now by Ms. 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 Ha uh, Harper. Mrs. Ray. Board members, again, please respond when I call your name. Captain Kelly? Yes. Mrs. Harper? Yes. Ms. Harlow? Yes. Ms. Mousset? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. I have five of the affirmative. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. The open session is closed. <laughs>